Hello, my name is Cheryl Wilson and I'm an abstract artist and if you're coming back to my channel, thank you from the bottom of my heart. There's so many of you I've gotten to know in the comment section and you've become my friends and for those especially in the membership group, thank you so much for the support you give me both as the supporter and the artisan. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I do abstract art sometimes start to finish. Sometimes I do a studio chat. I just did a, a studio, a day in my life. And today, <clears throat> I want to talk to you about a... Well, first of all, let's, let's talk about the red lipstick. Um, I did get a couple comments, and you all said, go ahead and try the red lipstick. Now, you know, I had a wonderful tube of red lipstick I was going to use. And in fact, I did on one of the videos and my dad wants me to wear red as opposed to my brown. And while I was in Florida, um, someone stole my beautiful red lipstick. And the story behind it was, it was a gift from my kids um, for Christmas. And it was a Chanel, a beautiful tube of red Chanel. And I had it in my purse. And when I was down there, when my dad had his heart attack, he's okay now, um, I was so worried about him. I went to the beach and <clears throat> to take a walk, and I left my purse in the car. The car was locked, but someone decided to break the glass, and two girls, and they decided they wanted my purse. So, this is a different brand, um, you know, it's uh, L'Oreal, and, and I like it, it's, it's beautiful, but I miss, I, I miss the, the story behind the Chanel, and there's a bigger story behind it, maybe someday I'll tell you. Um, but actually, it's appropriate for this um, video, because my um, collector that collected um, a lot of my resin um, cheese plates um, in fact she bought I think almost all of them I have a few left and she bought cappuccino cups for me that I hand painted with the um, alcohol inks and resin them um, and she has some of my paintings and she passed away about a year ago with cancer and in the bathroom of my daughter-in-law's um, in a basket now, why I was in there snooping through her stuff was I was babysitting the grandkids and my daughter and my granddaughter was in the bassinet and I looked in the mirror and I saw, oh my goodness, I have no makeup on, I need lipstick. So I just, the bathroom was right there and I went in and in a basket she had lipsticks and I chose the beautiful red Chanel. And then I found out later, because I did tell her that, um, I wore her lipstick. I found out it was her mom's. And Jody was a very special woman on this earth, very kind heart, Christian woman. And we all miss her dearly. And so that's why they gave me that for Christmas. So it was a meaningful tube of lipstick. Um, it was just a very bright red Chanel, just creamy, beautiful lipstick. Anyway, um, her husband contacted me uh, several months ago and said I want to continue Jody's journey of purchasing your art and he commissioned me to paint two paintings and he his only specification was he wanted blues and turquoises and so after working with him for a little bit on what he liked I had a idea but he basically said I love all your art I've seen all your art on your website I just love it all I just paint something so there is a particular sand from the area he's from so when I was on my journey to do my landscape paintings I actually included going down way down south of Florida and I went to the beaches there and I got some of the sands
So I incorporated that into the paintings. The reason why I hesitate showing you is um, because painting these paintings was uh, a long process. It went through many journeys. But the reason why I do want to show you is because this is a journey that many of you are going to take. Your paintings are not, you're not going to sit down and paint perfect paintings every time. Um, some of them are going to be paintings that are going to go through a lot of different layers, which I do on purpose do a lot of layers, um, layering on my paintings. But these um, were because they were so special to me. Commissions sometimes are a little harder to me. I feel a little bit more restricted. And there was, I think, one point that one of the paintings, I think I completely almost painted over and started at the beginning. <laughs> and um, even though you start at the beginning, there's still the history and the layers there. Um, and I'm not even sure if I captured everything that I painted because I, I had to go through a lot on these. But I wanted to show you what they look like. He loves them. Um, he loves the texture. He loved the fact I put the sand in it. But I wanted to show you the finished paintings and I wanted to show you the process as much as I captured on camera so you could see um, paintings that don't necessarily um, get done easily. So without me keep talking, I told you about my red lipstick and um, please put a comment below and say hi to my dad. He's um, 95. He's um, God has given him back to us from a very rough journey with a heart attack and he's a happy man he is a very good friend to me and so say hi to him in the comments I, I know that he would enjoy um, when people do talk about him he gets so tickled that, that somebody would even think about him um, but he's a wonderful man so anyway say hi to him in, in the comments and without further ado, let's get on to painting these commission paintings and um, the struggle, the love I paint ha had in them and the struggles I had in them. So here are the two paintings and you can see where I used a lot of the turquoises like ultramarine blues, uh, mixtures with some whites, some grays, I put some golds in there. You can actually see the sand in several of the areas and you can see the um, how I overlaid some of the gold on top of the textured sand and I think they turned out really beautiful and the main thing is is he really enjoys them and loves them. So I started out with two um, 12 by 12 canvases and you'll see me pull out like a catalyst uh, scraper and I just start using a transparent uh, blues on the base of the canvas. Well, I start with a paintbrush but then I spread it out and that is I believe that's the ultramarine blue and I pull out the turquoise ultramarine blue um, just whatever blues I had, uh, there were quite a few blues that I pulled out. This is um, a uh, golden fluid acrylic, and then there's the high flows, and you'll see me use the Titan titanium white high flow, which I always use in my art. And I'm using a scraper, and I turned the sound down because it was kind of annoying for your ears if you're sensitive. But I'm going to put this on um, a faster speed and turn on some music so you can just um, see me uh, use the scraper and go through adding the first layer of paint.
the colors It's all my love Memory Washed in every shade of green And all the colors It's all my love So what I did was, as I always do, I'm walking around my studio and I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a mark. <laughs> so I make a mark off camera and think, oh, I got to get my camera back on. But all I did was I grabbed some of my inspirational photos. Now this is for a commission. And I have an idea of what he wants, but I want to make sure that I'm staying um, inspired. So this is what I was looking at when I saw these black marks. And then I think I want to add, I want to add some white to the top, but I want to add some of this beautiful beige color. Of course, my marks. I love my marks. And I may add in to this or maybe another one some ink marks. I don't know. I haven't I haven't gotten that far. But I'm liking some of this movement. Of course, I will probably hear some of the gray. So I think I'm going to pick this more of a beige. But I always like to add in my oil pastel. Um, of course, here's some orange and... I may add in, I'm not quite sure, but I grabbed some of these just to give me some inspiration um, because this is this is how I do my landscapes. So it was it was actually giving me some good inspiration, especially when I looked at this piece and I love this piece. So that's what I'm gonna do. I have them sitting up here. Let me put something there so they don't. When I get going and they get splattered, I don't get them, you know, the plastic messed up. So, um, this is like pencil, um, graphite pencil. I have different types, I have different colors. I may add in some, I just pop the top off of that, some green. Um, here's a blue one. Just to kind of, kind of a dark blue. Just marks. It's it's the way that I get inspired. I love marks like this. I love very free. I love using the pencil at the end. So what I'm going to do, and these are those Derwent watercolors. So there's a lot of there's a lot of different markers. Sometimes I I get them so covered with paint. I have no idea what I'm using. I also have a bag of sea glass. I may add in a couple pieces of sea glass because it's beautiful. Here's an amber piece. I think that I may add the background a little bit more gray and the reason why is I want to add in some of the sands because this is from a place way down south in Florida where I went. And the sand down there is a very gray. So I thought about adding that in. So that's going to, that right there could be a very inspiring color to put, a very light wash in here. So that's what I think I'm going to do next is add a light wash of the, and it's going to be the high flows. So I'm using white and carbon black high flow. Uh, let's see. I need to get some brushes. Let's use this brush. And I just want to get the white 
a dab of the black to make the gray. So I want a little bit of two tones, so maybe I'll add some of that in here. Um, just put some water in here. Then if I look at the sands, it's different colors. So let's add some different color grays. Using my left hand. Okay, let's put some over here. Let's add some more white. So this is to get the depiction of the sand. I may add a little bit down. Very loose. Marks. All right, so let's see. Now this canvas, if you can see, I did not put gesso on it. So some places you can see the weave through. That's gonna be something that is totally a preference that you can have. I need to go get some more water. Um, and the reason why I say that is some people love Some people love um, the gesso on the canvas, so they don't have that. Let me get this close. You can see the weave. I don't mind that. In fact, I kind of like that. I'm getting out some thicker white because what I want to do is use a very scrubby brush and scrub in some white. I love the look of the canvas having a very textured look to it. So I'll do that by scraping it. This brush lets off some fibers. It always has. Now, now I'm going to dip my brush in just a little bit of water and continue to play with it. So I really like the look that this is giving. It's going to blend with the charcoal. And that's okay, it's what I like. If you're sensitive to sounds, I make a lot of them when I paint. Because I grab things and I don't, I'm, I, I'm not gonna be able to tell you I'm making a loud noise. I do turn it down when I do the hair dryer. But scraping on the canvas, is just something I just I just tend to do. So I apologize if I make a scraping noise or something. Okay, 
I'm going to scrape. I want to go back in and put some of those markings back in here. gray up in the top. All right. So I'm going to let this dry and then I'm going to take another look at this and see what I might need. I'm touching up on that weave. Pushing the paint down in. Just adds more texture in the scrape. Okay. Um, I like how this has the thicker white right there. I go through so much white paint. I love using white. It's just something about the pureness of white. Okay, let's let this dry and then we're going to come back and readdress some of this. Can't keep my hands off of it. <laughs> okay, let this dry. next step that I do I think is the start of where I may have gotten a little bit off instead of treating this like a landscape for a commission for somebody I did as I always tell everybody to start putting use your marks and this is a word I put in a lot of my paintings but as soon as I did this it seemed to take my mind away from that this is a seascape, a landscape for the sea. And I started to look at it more as uh, abstracts. So I lost my way a little bit here. And you'll see me even add um, different colors that have taken me way off. I even go to orange which is okay, um, but I lost my way for a little bit, well, for a while, and then I brought it back. And this is gonna happen to you over and over again. I mean, this is something that is just inherent in, in painting, that unless you're painting like realism and you know, you're doing step-by-step -step a face or you know, leaves or, or flowers, but I really got off track here when I started adding the different colors because he said he liked colors, but I should have stuck to the painting. If I were to add that, maybe if that's all I did was just those few little colors and kept going. But I had already painted him two paintings um, that were completely different from each other because to give him options that had a lot of color in it, and so on this one, I should have stayed with, with the, the seascape thoughts. So you'll see me work through this and I wanted to keep this in. I could have completely cut this piece out, but this, this is all part of painting. And so I kept this in and at this point they don't look too bad, but then I bring out the orange. And although orange is a complimentary color, I went too far. 
So you'll see me um, work through it. And even though this is a longer video, I wanted to keep all this in uh, so you could see what it looks like when another artist kind of goes off the rails and then attempts to bring it back into where, um, you know, where it should have been. And there's the orange I toned it down a little bit and it just to me it got harder for me to bring myself back to where I wanted it to be but I kept going because you don't give up and especially this was a commission and I knew that I needed to get it done so you can tell I'm looking at it thinking what do I do I turned one upside down thinking that was going to help and so here I am attempting to cover up and wipe off and so let's let's just uh let's just keep watching what I do I actually I think I forgot what I did here um until I'm playing it back because I mentally may have wanted to forget so um let's just see what I what I attempt to do I realized that what one of the other things I was doing is I, I tend to start making both of them the same um, the horizon line about the same and um, even though I know that I shouldn't do that I'm here attempting to kind of correct that and slowly the white uh, words the white letters are um, going away because I realize it's not something I want in there each pie sunset view Sleeping in the afternoon No place to be And nothing to prove That's sure something I could use for the air condition
So what I'm doing is I'm pulling out all the things that I know I like to do in a painting and I'm trying them and I know that some of them are not working for me. I can feel it while I'm doing it, but I'm not giving up. So here I go back and add some more of that color. I should have learned the first time, but basically what I'm doing is when the painting was still too wet and I did the drips and I dabbed the paper towel, it pulled up the paint underneath. So I'm trying to get rid of, with a more opaque paint, those, um, those white drip marks, because I don't like them. And oh my, why did I do this again? <laughs> I didn't learn the first time that orange didn't seem to, to go. I, but I, I kept thinking, I got to add color into this. Because he said he wanted color, so I wasn't... I really feel that what happened, I wasn't clear in my mind for the commission of what exactly I wanted to do. And that's why it's so important to have a clear idea of what you want. Even if I, even if I did, part of it is you're going to go through this scenario of push and pull and trying and taking away. And as you notice that I went to one painting thinking I'm making them both the same. Let me step back and just do one at a time. I guarantee you I get to the end, but this, this was, this was painful, but I wanted you to see this because not every painting you do. I mean, sometimes I've had paintings sit for six months or wow. So right now I'm, Looks like I'm completely painting over everything. And that's about, that's about exactly what I'm doing.
At some point, I know that some of you might be saying, she's wasting a lot of paint. And to take the risk to go through what I'm going through teaches you so much more than if you don't take the risk. And did I go through a lot of pain? I did. Um, you know, it's comparably, it's, you know, it's a couple squirts of paint and because it's, it's very pigmented. But if you don't take the chances and the risks to go through sometimes when you're struggling, then you will never learn. So I needed to go through this and even as many paintings as I've painted, I learned so much going through this. And it's something that I think if you push through, and that's the biggest thing I wanted you to get from this, if you push through, you will finally get to the end and you will finally get to a painting that you really will enjoy. So I let this sit and dry and I may, I think this has probably gone through like a couple days. So I grabbed um, my uh, Woody and it is um, something I love to do is make the marks and I made the marks, the scribbly marks on the horizon. And I'm liking the blue, a lot of the layers underneath from what I had done are showing through and um, I'm just pushing through. So here I've brought out some texture. That's a very, very textured piece of paper. And I'm in my mind thinking, let me go ahead and start adding the sand. Let me attempt to bring some of the uh, texturing into this, um, see where it takes me. And um, I'm deciding to paint that with ultramarine blue before I even put it down. So this is um, what I had planned all along was a lot of texture. So this was just something I grabbed to start that process. Now I'm bringing out the sand. I had put so much gel on there to adhere that uh, paper. I'm adding the sand. And the process here is just to slowly mix the sand and the gel together. And it dries clear so that darkness of the sand will still come through. 
but I want to make sure there's enough gel there to adhere the sand and if there's any pieces in the end you can always shake them off um, but that's what I'm doing at this point So I'm going to put this one to the side and let it dry a little bit and at this point I'm bringing back the, the second canvas that I had been working on and since I have a better idea what I don't want I kind of will have an idea of this one and it really did help separating the two and not doing them at the same time because for some reason my mindset was to paint them with the same level of horizon and I needed to get away from that so by looking at this as an individual painting but knowing where I want to go on this and then erasing the words I put on there this kind of helped me get back in the mindset of where I wanted to go so um, even though I still struggled it wasn't an easy process the whole scenario of painting these paintings was not easy for me this time um, but as you see, I do get to the, get to the end. I don't give up and, uh, I end up with exactly what I wanted.
So if you have stayed to the end of this video, which is, I know it's a very, very long uh, video, you'll notice that the very, very end, there was a couple things that I didn't film and I want to walk you through it. On the one on the left, um, I added that white at the bottom and that really accentuated the sand and the pieces of paper that I had added. I added some white uh, charcoal and then some the white letterings, which I did as long as they didn't overtake the painting. This time they were smaller. And I think what really helped was taking some of the gold splatter, the gold, um, goldens, like, um, ir like iridescent gold, and just splattering it uh, almost like a sea foam on the painting. The one on the right, I brought the white up a little bit higher, almost like, you know, white, white, you know, foam of the sea. And then I added some of the lettering a little smaller again, only in this time, uh, the black charcoal instead of the white. Both of them I added lines and again, I used some gold paint and splattered it on there. And the gold as the, like a balance with all those blues, it really turned out. And then I showed these to him and he really, really loved them. When he saw them in person, he was um, very happy with the texture. The texture on these is quite thick. If you were to turn them sideways, you'd see how thick they are. And you can add texture like that. The key is to make sure your varnish, you do spray varnish for the wording, the charcoal, any charcoal or graphite. And then to make sure that you have really added a good amount of the gel medium for the sand and then varnish on the top with a really good varnish, a couple coats, and that adheres everything in there and keeps it, especially if you use a really good varnish like from Golden's or another um, company that where they put out really good products. So I hope you enjoyed this. I know it was a long process and I hope it was beneficial to keep all the areas in that didn't turn out so you could see that even though you go through some rough hours or a day even in your paintings or months sometimes, if you keep going, you're going to get to the end and your, and your markings that you so enjoy are going to still come out. It's just going to end up being the perfect ones for the painting. So thank you for staying and let me know what you think and um, at least give me a thumbs up for hanging in there in these paintings and staying with it.